Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is your channel master, Spruce and Studs, and I'm going to start off with a whine, a complaint on this particular action figure that we're going to review. So I understand the Ultramarines are the bread and butter of Joy Toys slash Games Workshop, and sometimes it's a bit tiring to see them, unfortunately, I'll have to say. But don't get me wrong, I am extremely thankful that we have our hands on Warhammer 40k action figures. That being said, now I kind of wonder why Joy Toy decided to produce a captain with a jump pack that is of the Ultramarines. I mean, jump packs are often associated with assault troops, and Ultramarines typically aren't associated with that kind of tactic. It would have made sense if Joy Toy decided to do, say, Space Wolves or Blood Angels for this particular action figure. But unfortunately, they didn't, but this is what we're going to be reviewing, and this is what we're going to be stuck with. Now, it's nice to see that Joy Toy did come out with some Blood Angels regular jump pack Primaris, so look forward to that review. But I digress now, so let's jump into this review. And so finally, we have the jump pack captain in front of us, and let's see what's going on with them. So clearly, there is a laurel that is wrapped around the top of the helmet. The laurel seems to be non-shaded. However, it is nice to see that there is some sort of decoration on the helmet itself. And then moving on down, we clearly have a beautiful and gorgeous jewel-like red lenses for the helmet. And then it's also nice to see that the vents here are actually shaded on this action figure. And speaking of shading, I'm going to say that the general aesthetic of this Ultramarine seems like he's, I don't know, for some odd reason, darker than I remember the rest of the Ultramarine's blue to be. But that could just be me. So anyways, taking a look at the pauldron, you have the Ultramarine's chapter symbol on it. Looks like it's got a little bit of weathering on the side and some gold outlining on the outside of it. And then we will flip around to the other pauldron, and we have a double Aquila here. And straight off the bat, I noticed that for some odd reason that there is no eye on this particular eagle head. There was an action figure that I reviewed in the past that was also the same that was lacking that particular eye. However, with the eagle wings, there is plenty of sheeting that is in between the recess of the feathers, which is really nice to see. And then you have this banner that says Ultra on here. And the Ultra is actually screened onto the action figure. It's not raised, unlike other action figures that we've seen in the past. And looking at the heraldic shield here, this is a larger than normal heraldic shield. So you have a heavily shaded border region right here. And clearly there is a skull with a blue and yellow checker pattern. There's a nice shading on the tassels down here too. In the middle, wing skull. And then the vent region in the torso area is unfortunately not shaded. And in the belt region of this action figure, there is a very large golden sun-like buckle here, which is something that we're not usually accustomed to seeing. So it's nice that Joy Toy is varying the symbols or Games Workshop is varying the symbols on these action figures. And there is clearly an amulet that is dangling down that I don't think we've seen before in the past either with the purity seal. On the side armor plate right here, there is clearly a very long purity seal. The scrawl is ingrained in the plastic of this action figure. And on the right side of this Space Marine, there is an empty holster. And as we move on down, there's really nothing too much to see, except that on the right leg, there is a skull that is grinning back at you. The skull has plenty of shading that's happening with it too. And it seems to be that it is weathered as well. There's another fancy kind of like bouquet tied off laurel that's on the bottom here. And what obviously sets this action figure apart from the others is the grav shoots here. So this grav shoot is actually movable and it looks like it's a 90 degree angle that you're able to move it in and out as you can see here and the other side is reflected the same way. And as we turn around this action figure to take a look at the back, you get to see the jet engines here. And apparently these engines are actually movable as well. You can see you can move this back and forth. And because I moved it so much, it popped out. It literally is a ball and socket joint right here. Well, not really a joint, but just a ball and socket. So that is the body of this Ultramarine. And we are going to take a look at the armaments here. So he's got a standard issue plasma pistol complete with the black casing, the 
gunmetal adornments on the outside of the black casing and then a matte blue coil with some shading i keep repeating this and i'll repeat it again it would be nice to see this area be metallic blue we've seen the metallic blue in the past especially with the thunderwolf cavalry plasma pistol taking a look at the chain sword i would say that the body of the chain sword is standard issue it's got that black casing here some gunmetal adornments over here but things start getting a little bit different here you get to see a, a wing skull right here a banner with an ultra that's been printed on it on the pommel of this chain sword there is a skull so these areas are just a little bit different from what we've seen before on the rest of the action figures that we've reviewed in the past. Now taking a look at the backpack of this action figure, once again, more grab shoots right here with the flap. Looks like the flap can go all the way back and then you can push it down like this. So there is a good deal of movement here. The engines of this backpack are completely fixed. And then you have the jet engine right here, which is very cool looking because they decided to have a nice translucent red color. This color choice makes this thing more realistic as to what a jet engine is supposed to look like. And unfortunately, on this particular end of the backpack, another 2C miss by Joy Toy, which is again, unfortunate to see. As we speak right now, David Toys is going to be shipping me another backpack, or at least this part of the action figure so I can glue it on. So they weren't exactly too specific as to what they were shipping to me, but regardless, at least the distributor is nice enough to help out. Second to last thing we'll take a look at is the cape. The cape obviously is a removable thing. You've got some nice sheeted braided cords right here, which adds a touch of realism to it. And I really like how the cape is kind of like slung off to one side and gives a little bit more feeling of fluid motion to it. And it's always nice to see a level of consistency with Joy Toys capes in that you always get that gorgeous shading in the recesses as well as the bright reds where the cape folds are highest and catch the light. So there's a lot of realism and a lot of motion here. And the final thing that this action figure comes with is a plastic stand and kind of like a structure right here in which you can pose the action figure in a flying motion. And so that is the review of this jump pack, Captain. And now it's time to wrap it up. Right off the bat, let's address a couple negatives. One of them is the manufacturer's fault. Actually, I think both of them are actually the manufacturer's fault. One is a choice and one is obviously a QC miss. As I stated before in the introduction, kind of a miss in my opinion in that this Captain should have been more Assault Legion-like. What I mean by that is, this should have been a Space Wolf, or this should have been a Blood Angel, not a regular Ultramarine. That's all I have to say on that one. And I'm going to guess that most of the people are probably going to agree with me, except the Ultramarines fans. Anyway, the other one is a QC error. Obviously, it is missing the engine on the jump pack. If this does happen, you should reach out to your vendor and see what they can do to possibly replace that missing part for you. Don't get me wrong, there are a lot of positives. First of all, the biggest positive is just this action figure itself. I've always loved assault-based troops, and this obviously fulfills that role. Another thing that I really do like is, to be honest, the chainsword. There's a lot of flavor with it. And the final thing, interestingly enough, is the cape. I really like how the cape looks, and most of all, I like how the cape actually gives you the feeling of motion like this captain is flowing through the air ever so gracefully and gently. As usual, thank you so much members of the chapter for tuning into this video. I am extremely thankful that you take the time out and watch my videos. It is very much appreciated. And if you are interested in picking up this action figure, you know you can always pick it up at David Toys where they provide exemplary customer service. And case in point, they will be sending me a new jump pack not too long from now. And before you check out, do not forget to use the code SNS for 12% off of your purchase. And with that being said, members, thank you so much again, and I'll see you all in the next one.